Tere Homekust, labas rītas, labrīt, mani latviešu draugi. Guten Morgen, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly an international event here, uh, online. Um, welcome to this, welcome to uh, German-Estonian Lithuanian conference and also trade mission. It's uh, broadcasted from uh, Ahakas uh, office in Tallinn in uh, this uh, very welcoming uh, office here in Estonia. My name is Oscar. I'm going to be our humble guide throughout the day. It's actually a half a day. We start now and we finish uh, at about uh, half past 12. Uh, so still uh, plenty of uh, other activities uh, to do for the remaining day. But as regards for the conference, I'm uh, reminding that this is an online meeting when we all see each other or sort of see each other, but then it's followed by B2Me meetings uh, that start already tomorrow and happen until uh, 22nd of October. So it's a good opportunity for uh, Estonian and Lithuanian companies to meet German companies. Um, I have to be uh, open about it. Uh, it's online meetings, but uh, still it's a good opportunity to get connected and stay connected. Isn't it nice? So. Ahaka is really good at this. I think uh, networking like a boss, the other uh, attribute says. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice thing to keep in mind uh, about these events. So use that opportunity, opportunity. So if you haven't yet applied for B2B meetings, so you can uh, address your question or this, this willingness to meet German companies at your local Ahaka office, and that will guide you to the right person to apply to. I know that some companies have already applied, but uh, those who are still considering can do it. Uh, B2B meetings start tomorrow. But today we have uh, some opening speeches, then uh, best practices from Germany, also from uh, Lithuania and Estonia, and of course, pitches from uh, German companies. In total, seven companies would be pitching their uh, uh, companies today, so we will have a better understanding what are these companies and what do they do right as promised uh, the opening words uh, we have three opening speakers first being Ait Bergman she's uh, uh, working for the company named BNT attorneys at law which is a leading international law firm in central and eastern uh, Europe and she's of course the president of German Baltic Chamber of Commerce in Estonia Ait, good morning good morning uh, I'm here, but I can't. Uh, uh, I can't show myself um, because the video is not working. But uh, maybe someone is uh, is um, correcting this. But anyway, um, welcome to all participants. And as Oscar said, I am Art Bergman, attorney, managing partner of the BNT Law Office in Estonia, and currently region president of the Chamber of Commerce in Estonia. And as we know, we still have a pandemic situation, but it is important that we do everything to support business contacts anyway. Therefore, I want to give especially warm thanks to the German Federal Ministry of Economy and the Energy Guardians for this conference. And of course, especially to the AHK team who has made it possible to transfer this whole thing to virtual format and let it take place like this. And even the B2B dogs, as you know, are organized virtually. In Estonia, there will be 24 of them, which is, of course, 24 business opportunities. The uh, German Baltic Chamber of Commerce is the largest international chamber of commerce in the Baltic states. We currently have 430 members and 36 employees. We have organized hundreds of matchmaking events like this over the years and actively supported the initiation of business between the countries of Germany and uh, the Baltics. And in the field of uh, renewable energies and energy efficiency, we have in the last years organized 23 business trips and exhibitions. We are also happy to support companies in the process of market entry. And generally, energy efficiency in buildings has become more and more important everywhere. The focus of today's conference is the area of low energy buildings. I've been told 
that the existing buildings consume about 40% of the total Estonia energy consumption. And the Estonian government has taken various measures to increase the country's energy efficiency. The focus is on energy efficient construction, but also on renovation of existing properties. And one of the stated goals of the plan was to improve the quality of currently existing building stock. So nowadays, the construction of low energy houses has become increasingly urgent. Project developers and construction companies are looking for better and more cost-effective solutions. And I believe that today's conference will be an interesting contribution to these matters. Uh, therefore, I wish you all a successful conference and many good business contacts. And give back to Oscars, I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Ayat, so much. Right. Um, we continue now with the openings. Um, uh, the next uh, speaker, uh, he's representing Modus Group. And Modus Group in Lithuania is uh, quite a remarkable uh, group of companies. Uh, they focus on renewable energy mobility service, uh, car business, also smart parking solutions. They represent brands like Porsche, Bentley, BMW, and uh, other big names. And uh, uh, Kestutis Bogdanovic is, is, is our next speaker. And he's also, besides from being from Motors Group, also the president of the German Baltic Chamber of Commerce in Lithuania. So uh, Kestutis, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Koskos. Good morning, Ayat. Um, I would like, first of all, to welcome all participants of the online business trip. And uh, I hope that this trip will be definitely powerful and with tangible results. So my name is Kesko Tilbogonajus. I'm a member of the Prize Board um, of Modus Group. And uh, um, uh, as well, I'm president of German about the Chamber of Commerce in Lithuania. It's a huge pleasure to be here and to welcome all of you. Um, so as well, from my side, um, first of all, since the really big things goes to the Federal Ministry of Economy and as well to Energy Gardens and as well German Chamber of Commerce team who um, transformed and as well made uh, this um, conference in virtual format to ensure uh, in such short time but as well meet uh, uh, possible uh, talks for the participants in Lithuania. It's a great job which was done during the last days and weeks. So um, let me to emphasize how important it is that despite that continued uh, continue pandemic situation, which we do face in, in the Baltics as well in Europe, that everything is done in order to ensure that business contacts and business uh, initiatives uh, continue to be possible. Um, as well, I would like to reiterate that the Baltic Chamber of Commerce and the, the Baltic states, like my colleague and Bergman has mentioned, is really a powerful partner for market entry uh, in the Baltic states, but also in the opposite, I would say, and direction for market entry in Germany. The topic of today's conference is not underestimated importance for a country um, like Lithuania. In Lithuania, 98% of population owns private residential property. However, most of the housing stock is outdated and not energy efficient. Uh, compared to other EU countries with similar climatic conditions or climate conditions, one approximately two times more energy is consumed for heating uh, uh, the buildings. Uh, the greatest potential for energy and cost savings exists in the area of energy efficiency of the buildings. It, that is a conclusion and fact speaks opinion. Um, as of January 1st, 2018, only low energy buildings of energy efficiency class A plus are to build in Lithuania. And as of January 1, 2021, only near zero energy buildings. According to EU requirements, every new building must meet the highest energy efficiency. It is clear message in our country as well for everyone who is doing business here in Lithuania, therefore good market opportunities for German companies, uh, both in the refurbishment market, but as well in the segment for new buildings. Finally, in Lithuania alone, 
one to seven new business centers with a total area of more than 300,000 square meters are scheduled to open in 2021. Therefore, modern energy saving systems and smart home products are really in high demand. Another growth growing sector could be construction of hotels. Therefore, I want to just uh, within um, welcome words uh, to emphasize the opportunity which we do face here in the Baltic States and as well in Lithuania. From my side, once again, welcome to the virtual conference. I wish you a powerful meetings, discussions as well, um, which should uh, um, come out with tangible results. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Kestudis. Um, while our next speaker, um, Ferdinand, is uh, switching on his uh, microphone and camera, I'm just uh, going yes. to say a few things about uh, the, the company he is representing, Energie Vechta. It's the partner of uh, AHK in this event, in this project. And uh, the company focuses on consulting their clients on uh, topics of renewable energies, energy efficiencies and green technologies. So this goes very much in line with uh, today's topics uh, that are low energy buildings and energy saving as such. So Ferdinand Elzeser, the floor is yours. Thank you, Oscar. And uh, good morning, everybody here from Germany, live from Berlin. Yeah, as you said, uh, my name is Ferdinand Elsesser from Energiewächter, and I just want to give you a very, very brief overview about the so-called Energiewende, the German energy transition, to give you some more background information for our upcoming event of today. So let's start with the first slide. This slide just uh, gives you an overview of the uh, different uh, measures that uh, or, or goals that Germany has set to, to reach um, climate neutrality. So um, as I've seen before, actually, um, Estonia and Lithuania, of course, they also have these goals um, according to the European 2050 goals um, uh, for the renewable energy sector. So I don't want to get uh, too much into detail over there due to uh, the shortage of time. Well, as as you can see, um, Germany plans to reduce its um, its greenhouse gas emissions um, up to 95% um, until the year 2050. And this, of course, will only go if we um, use a lot of renewable energies and, of course, um, enhance the energy efficiency over all sectors in Germany, actually. Um, why are we um, introducing this energy transition in Germany? Um, of course, we want to reduce our greenhouse gases, but a very big point is also we want to phase out of the nuclear energy in Germany. Actually, in the next year, the last remaining running um, nuclear power plants will be switched off. And of course, we will have to um, secure our energy supply for the uh, generations to come, for sure. Yeah. So. If, you have, if we have a look at this, um, at this slide, you can see that the um, share of renewable energies in the electricity sector has, um, has increased um, a lot over the last decades. So um, the figures from 2020 are uh, 45 to about 50% of uh, the share of renewable energies. On the other side, you can see, of course, that in the heating and cooling sector, which is mainly in the building sector, of course, um, there's only a share of 15% of renewable energies. And in the transport sector, well, it's even worse. We only have a share of 7.3% renewable energies, which is some part of uh, biofuels and, of course, very few electric vehicles here in Germany. Germany. So, um, I mean, we we reached a, lo uh, a lot already in the electricity sector, but as you can see here, uh, even we in Germany have to do a lot more for the housing sector and for the transportation sector as well to to increase the the usage of renewable energies in the next years. So. If you have a look at the current generation of renewable energies, or this was the uh, generation in last year, actually, you can see that in last year, well, of course, due to Corona, we had a little bit less um, demand in our grid, but the renewable energies already were the major source of uh, well, of energy generation in Germany. And from these 51%, uh, uh, you can see 
that uh, more than the half or in total 27% of the German energy generation is coming from the wind energy sector. Um, the solar sector is also quite strong. I mean, 11%, it's uh, already as much as the, all the nuclear power plants in Germany. So you can really see that decentralized um, energy generation is uh, really contributing to the, um, to the whole general um, electricity generation in Germany. Of course, you can see that we use some hydropower, but um, as you can imagine, our geography in, in Germany doesn't allow that we uh, build many, many more hydropower plants um, in the next years. So on the other side, bioenergy is uh, contrib contributing 10% um, to the electricity sector, but of course it's it's contrib uh, contribution to the um, heat sector, to the building sector is actually way higher. Um, on the next slides, we have some figures about the building sector. And um, well, as you can see, we I, I think we have quite um, similar uh, problems and, and challenges in Germany and in Lithuania and Estonia. So um, the majority of buildings in Germany was built before 1978, which was actually the year when we had the first regulation for energy efficient buildings or for, for newly built buildings and um, of course as you can imagine so most of the buildings uh, have a very low energy efficiency standard and um, on the right side you can see that also uh, three quarters of the whole uh, of all the heating systems in germany are not state-of-the-art technology so of course we also have a lot uh, to improve there and um Miss uh, Miss Bergman told us the the figures that in Estonia the building sector contributes to forty percent of all greenhouse gas emissions. Well, in Germany it's roughly the same; it's one third of the whole um, greenhouse gas emissions. So, yeah, the building sector is really a major stake in the energy energy transition, um, which you really should have to focus on. So, on this slide we can see. Um, which is actually the real uh, energy demand in buildings in Germany, um, at least for some recent years. And um, again, I think it's we, we really have more or less the same climate zone. So of course, in, in your region, I think you are also more heating in, in winter than you would be cooling in summer. So that's why the figures should look uh, more or less the same in your country. And um, well, as you can see, the, the biggest amount of energy is used for heating. So that's actually the point where we have to improve our energy efficiency. And um, I won't really come to that because our next uh, speaker, Marco Schmidt, you can already see him. He will go into detail in this point actually. And um, so, yeah, we, we had seen which is the energy supply. And now I, I just want to show you some measures for buildings which are new built, which have been set up since 2009. So on the one side, you can choose to directly use renewable energies in your building, which would be biomass, biogas, geothermal energy, which of course means heat pumps, um, or you could look, you could use solar energy, so photovoltaics or solar thermal energy for heat generation. So yeah, you can, if you build your house new, you can um, opt for these and uh, have at least a share of 30% of the total energy usage uh, to be contributed by, by biogas. On the other hand, if you are not able to do this, let's say you don't have enough money, you don't have enough space, your building doesn't allow it or the, the architect doesn't allow it, there are some different substitute measures which you could use, um, which could be the, the use of industrial hate, uh, waste heat or district heating systems. You could um, install combined heating and power productions, which is of course more for, for bigger buildings, let's say hospitals or, or town halls um, or on the other side you could um, set up a way higher uh, energy efficiency standard for your building which uh, should be at least 15 percent higher than the regular efficient newly uh, built building according to our energy saving ordinance. <laughs> 
Yeah. And um, well, as I said, that was really just a very, very brief overview because, well, we have uh, more, more speakers who are way more into details. Um, so I just wanted to give you this, this idea of the um, Energiewende in Germany. If you want to uh, gather more information, you can go to the website of our Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. It's germanenergysolutions.de. There you can find... Um, more information on the uh, sustainable energy supply and uh, more information about our German companies. And um, I will stop for all there now. Thank you very much. And um, I wish you um, good luck and, an, and a very interesting conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ferdinand, for uh, getting us into the topic in more details. I think you're totally right in our region. Heating uh, consumes really loads of energy if compared to cooling. For example, uh, my lady in my house, she made me to switch on heating already in August in some days, not talking about September and October, of course. So, yes, uh, we do love a uh, comfortable life, and that requires some uh, some resources from our uh, Mother Earth. And that's a problem uh, as population grows, and uh, we love uh, to increase our uh, standard of living. So uh, we shall continue with uh, best practices from Germany. And our next speaker, he's a researcher in uh, Technische Universität in Berlin. Uh, the, he's a researcher in Federal Institute for Research on Buildings and Spatial Development. So uh, I think a very good match for today's conference. Marco Schmidt, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction I have uh in real uh, uh two positions um i'm working in uh, the research uh, institute in a federal one and we are responsible for uh, all the federal buildings like uh yeah our chancellorship and and so on um i'm as well working at the technical university in Berlin, uh currently responsible uh, for the energy sector is the ministry for economics and it's not only that um, they're responsible they uh, finance as well the evaluation of uh, projects and i'm uh, doing this currently for 11 projects this is one of my projects it's the hospital uh, in frankfurt and hospitals are one of the uh, really uh, large consumers. What is important when we start to evaluate uh, the energy consumption is to implement uh, measuring systems. And this is one of our topics we have today. Um, it's a question of smart buildings and to evaluate where the energy is gone. You don't need to understand the Sankey diagram, but uh, as you can imagine, hospitals are quite complex, but our new buildings are getting more and more complex. So therefore, it's becoming uh, really important to implement uh, systems where you can evaluate where your energy is going and what efficiency the certain systems have and we compared uh, for this hospital for example the demand and the real consumption demand means uh, that uh, if you want to start to construct a new building uh, you have to check um, the potential energy consumption but if you uh, measure and co uh, compare the um, real data uh, later on, you will find that there is a huge gap in the forecast and what you really find, especially the topic of cooling, where I want to focus on because uh, the new buildings, um, they need uh, much more energy for cooling than you expect in the beginning. Uh, this is related to the increase, uh, for example, in energy consumption um, for electricity inside and uh, a certain load. Uh, so therefore, uh, you underestimate uh, the amount of cooling and you overestimate the amount uh, you need for heating. I'm um, as well evaluating uh, these projects. This is one of our uh, plus energy buildings from uh, our federal institution. It's the uh, um, Federal Environmental Agency in Dessau. 
And this is a quite interesting building. It's still under construction. Um, it will produce more energy during the year than uh, um, consumption inside. Um, one of our concepts for plus energy buildings is using photovoltaic systems uh, mainly and a heat pump uh, inside to produce uh, heat for the winter time. And uh, we use directly uh, from the underground the cold for the summertime. Um, the coefficient of performance for heating is about 4.2. These are real measurements. Uh, this system is not um, uh, um, finished, but uh, we now we can as well estimate the uh, coefficient of performance for cooling. And for this building, it's 40. So that's quite good. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the outer key um, for heating is just 20%. As you can imagine that we are producing um, the uh, electricity uh, uh, in the summertime with photovoltaic systems, but use it in the wintertime uh, for heating. And uh, uh, therefore, we have a problem. Uh, so we start now to think about a seasonal storage as well for electricity. These are the real uh, measured data. So our photovoltaic production will mainly uh, feed the public grid. What is not bad, um, but um, the outer key for this building uh, is just one third. And uh, therefore we need to um, improve the situation currently for plus energy buildings. Yeah, there was a question. Um, we have um, additionally one plus energy building. This is the uh, environmental agency in Berlin. Uh, the heat pump has a coefficient of four uh, compared to 4.2 uh, in Dessau. And um, you have to consider currently um, that the prices for electricity are quite high in Germany. It's uh, 29 cent per kilowatt hour for natural gas. That means that uh, um, it's six times more expensive, but the coefficient of performance is just four. Um, on the other hand, we have to um, realize that the prices for natural gas are increasing the last months. So it might be that we are uh, at the moment or in the near future, um, it's the same price now um, for this concept if you compare to heating by natural gas. Um, you have to think together um, as well the topic of uh, cooling because we want to save 50% um, until the year 2020, so last year, in the um, overall uh, uh, consumption for buildings. At the same time, we get an increase of 260% for cooling. So there's a conflict in goals. Uh, the reason are we, uh, the new buildings have an increased use of glass, a decrease in heat capacity, uh, an increase in electricity, City consumption inside of our building. So our systems get more and more uh, effective, but uh, they get bigger and we have more energy supply for electricity inside. We have an increase in the urban heat island effect and as well global warming. So therefore we have to um, concentrate as well on the increase in cooling. Yeah, as more and more you insulate your building, you get uh, less uh, rid of uh, your heat load inside of your building in the summer months. And uh, try and never to use electricity to cool your building because if you use electricity, you have to convert everything into exhaust heat. There's no way out. Yeah, So you uh, worsen the situation. And it's inefficient, unsustainable. And in sometimes like here in uh, some states, uh, I think it's Mexico or Brazil, it seems to be dangerous. And you have to exchange in the near 
future as well, all your systems, because of the uh, HFC phase down, which was uh, defined now in the protocol in the next years. If you look what, uh, uh, this is one mean uh, square meter worldwide, it's the incoming global radiation. Uh, it's about 4.4 kilowatt hours per square meter uh, every day. A certain amount will be uh, converted to term radiation and a certain amount is reflection, but this is less than 10%. Yeah. Most important is the uh, conversion in the evaporation of water. Uh, on a global scale, and uh, we have just a small amount which will be converted into sensible heat. So this is the mean of one square meter worldwide. Uh, if you look now what is happening in urban areas, because you shift all the rainwater into sewer systems, there's no way out that um, you have to convert all the incoming global radiation in the summer months into increased thermal radiation and into sensible heat. And this will we call the urban heat island effect. So the urban heat island effect is mainly related to that vegetation. Um, there's a huge option that uh, you implement evaporative cooling already at the uh, skin of your buildings. So the most easy way is to green your roofs. And we have to focus on that uh, because um, there's a second problem uh, we uh, get more and more flooding in urban areas uh, during stormwater events. Um, at the same time, we get an increase in urban heat island effect. And it's for Berlin, it's I think the same I would uh, expect uh, for the uh, Baltic states in urban areas. Um, so try to uh, do passive insulation with green roofs and green facades, climbing plants. Uh, because this uh, improves the local situation as well for your building. Uh, you can compare the urban heat island effect. It's a, uh, a roof just directly in the neighborhood here, um, which I measured uh, in Berlin. Uh, another option is working on evaporative cooling. Always try to use rainwater because rainwater has no uh, lime. Uh, these are two buildings I am currently evaluating. It's the Bell Foundation and the Tuts Publisher. And um, it's not uh, just that we supply uh, the, the building with sustainable cooling, so sustainable energy. It's a renewable energy, which we have to fulfill for all our buildings. Um, we can use these systems as well to cool uh, computers or for hospitals, okay. for example. Uh, the big uh, energy consumption um, uh, for the uh, medical equipment. Um, we can, in the wintertime, use uh, the exhaust heat from computers as well to heat buildings. So it makes no sense that, uh, for example, for these buildings, we have uh, 12 kilowatt hours of uh, 12 kilowatt in our server racks that you additionally invest six kilowatt hour to get rid of uh, this energy in summer and in winter. Always try to evaporate water and to cool computers and to cool your building. Uh, this is a view inside. Uh, so you can activate, for example, your walls or your ceilings in your building. Uh, in these buildings, we are using these convectors um, because with convectors in this shape, you can uh, work already with a difference of eight to nine to 10 degrees. So you can heat your building with 30 degree coming, for example, from a heat pump or you can cool your building with 18 or 19 degree coming from these evaporative cooling systems. So it's a convector coming not from Germany, coming from Switzerland, but I'm scientist. I don't need to focus just on systems coming from Germany. And this is a so-called uh, uh, KV25 because it has a coefficient of performance of at least 20. Five for cooling. 
Another option for cooling and um, is uh, in air conditioners. So um, because we don't evaporate directly uh, water into the supply air, we evaporate it into the exhaust air and have a heat exchanger in between so that we can um, cool down the external air, for example, from 30 degree to 16 degree. Uh, um, uh, to 20, 80, 90, 20 degree because we exchange it in a heat exchanger, uh, uh, the cooled exhaust air. And this is a really uh, efficient uh, system. We compared the operating cost for three different uh, cooling production. Uh, so for an absorption chiller, which was uh, in former times, the more efficient idea of uh, using coal generation and in summer produce um, coal out of heat from coal generation, but it's the most expensive way to produce coal. It costs about 16, 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, uh, compression system in this building costs about nine cents, but uh, if operative exhaust air cooling post costs uh, 0 0.7 cents. And if you're using rainwater, you can even save the um, energy and the operating cost for water. Then uh, you use, um, you pay about 0 0.1 cent per kilowatt hour. This is really uh, a cheap solution, just evaporate water for cooling processes. So it's a win-win-win situation. The system is cheaper in investment, cheaper in operation, and it's better for the environment because uh, you are not producing a source heat. You produce uh, finally evaporation and precipitation. And that's what uh, all over the globe is missing currently. We reduce the evaporation rate uh, completely. Um, another option for renovation, because I think in the Baltic states, uh, uh, um, the renovation of old construction systems are important. So this is one of our examples in uh, Germany of an old uh, Empire postal office. It was later a town hall, so it's 140 years old. And uh, I was able to reduce the consumption demand from 360 kilowatt hours per square meter per year to uh, 64. Um, I would say these are uh, quite uh, common uh, systems, uh, mainly uh, the exchange of windows and the uh, inside and outside insulation. But we combined um, everything as well with uh, uh, solar thermal uh, systems, uh, uh, cooling as well in the summer times so with rainwater harvesting and uh, photovoltaic production on top of this building. Quite disappointing is the amount of solar heating support by the solar thermal systems. It's just 1.26 kilowatt hours per square meter and year, but it's like that, yeah. I would recommend uh, still to use solar thermal systems in your building, but uh, uh, don't be disappointed when the outcome is not not uh, so high as expected in the beginning. Um, quite important for us is the smart home uh, system as well uh, for this building, not only for the more complex buildings, you need to know where your energy is uh, going to. Uh, you want to find out what is the performance of uh, the whole systems and especially uh, the uh, comfort, the indoor climate comfort. Therefore, we monitor uh, as well single rooms uh, for uh, CO2 and the air quality inside of your building. And um, uh, for this building, we implemented a hybrid ventilation and in my view, an exchange rate of 0 0.1 per hour is already sufficient to fulfill at least uh, uh, 1,500 ppm in your building and to avoid a dew point 
on thermal bridges. So this, uh, I would say you can still open the window, but an artificial um, ventilation system of 2.4 per day, I would recommend not to put too much ventilation into your building because then you get a problem in the winter time uh, of uh, too low humidity in your air. And a final project is a water G prototype, maybe just short. Uh, there we implemented a seasonal storage. Uh, already in the beginning, I talked about seasonal storage that we are producing heat in the summertime but, uh, and electricity, but we need to use it in the winter time. Um, uh, so here we have a passive system with um, uh, uh, solar collector on top of the building, but a greenhouse in front that we produce heat and we store this heat, produced heat into a seasonal storage inside of the building. And in the winter time, we use this heat uh, for heating. So it's a, a zero energy building for heating. But uh, we have to consider that it's quite expensive. So the cost for seasonal storage per cubic meter is about 500 euros. And we store, uh, we save about two euro 30 uh, per cubic meter. So this is uh, much less than the uh, um, capital costs for the systems. So uh, I'm coming to the conclusions. There's an increase in cooling demand uh, especially in modern buildings that has to be uh, implemented, included already in our energy concepts uh, for the new construction and as well for renovation. Evaporative cooling, I would say is mandatory. Um, never use electricity to cool a building. And um, what we do need for solar thermal system is a feed in tariff uh, because we need to avoid the stagnation. So I would say this is coming in the next years. I think we need a feed in tariff to avoid stagnation. Uh, what we have already in this uh, uh, photovoltaic system, uh, everything you don't use, you feed in the public grid. Uh, we do need it for solar thermal systems as well. Uh, the seasonal storage is currently not presentable. And um, I would say we are focusing currently solar thermal use or district heating and co-generation with local evaporative cooling. And this is currently in competition for the concept of photovoltaic systems uh, uh, supply a heat pump and uh, direct geothermal cooling and competition. So these are the concepts for Germany. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And um, I will give you this presentation if you're interested in, uh, I would say, uh, send me an email or you can uh, get in contact with the IHK. So right. thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marco. Yes, uh, we will share the slides uh, and also we will share the recording of this conference as a link uh, so you can have a, have a recap uh, afterwards. Uh, Marco, I have a few questions coming in from the audience. Jurgita is asking, what calculation tools or software are you using for energy demand uh, calculations? Yeah, there are two systems available. So um, the one which is not working really properly is uh, 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 just a fixed simulation after our D norm, uh, uh, 19855. Um, I showed it in the beginning. Um, there we are uh, currently working on uh, to improve the uh, system, especially for cooling, because we absolutely underestimate the amount for cooling. Uh, if you want to be more uh, uh, exact, uh, always use a dynamic system uh, for uh, um, uh, the expectations, what the energy uh, uh, consumption might be. We are doing this for the more complex buildings, plus energy buildings, like uh, using Energy Plus or uh, Trinsys for your uh, um, expectations. It's much better. Right. 
Uh, another question about evaporation solutions for water. Are they viable in uh, Germany or Baltic countries for single households or is it just for larger scale buildings? Yeah, it's currently available already for single households. And in this building here, I produce it by myself. It's a quite easy topic. I would say it's the uh, uh, um, uh, low uh, uh, technology uh, idea. Yeah, if you compare it, for example, to compression cold systems. So you can use it uh, for single households. But uh, I would say it's more common in the big buildings, uh, currently office buildings at the moment. And uh, for federal buildings, we are not allowed to, to use electricity, for example, for uh, uh, cooling in the summer months. But you can use it for uh, uh, a renewable energy like evaporative cooling so this is a good option currently i see all right uh, thank you so much we will i have a question sorry i have a question uh, uh to mark schmidt uh, he was saying that uh preferable you have to use dynamic simulation systems but dynamic simulation systems are not acknowledged by kfv in germany and this is a very big problem of reducing CO2 in Germany. It's only acknowledged by Glava systems. And if you have such, if you have such a, a, a range of, uh, of uh, energy, saving, uh, energy saving tools, you will never be able to make a dynamic simulation uh, and give this to KFV and get money for it. And this is a general big problem in Germany. I hope this is not abroad like this. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. You're absolutely right. So, um, uh, but we need to improve our systems as well. So, um, but uh, there are just a few buildings currently evaluated because uh, I, I would say I would recommend to evaluate much more buildings and to come to uh, better simulation programs. This is really important in the near future. And this is part of our discussion today on uh, smart buildings. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as we are very tight uh, with the schedule, we have to move on. Uh, I suggest that we use a Q&A box for questions. Um, so the next se uh, section in our conference is uh, uh, the first block of uh, Germany companies presenting. So four companies in this block, uh, each of them like five, seven minutes. Please follow the clock. Uh, all right, and uh, the first company, Get Air, uh, and it is focused on decentralized home ventilation, represented by Sebastian Müller. Sebastian, hello. Hello, good morning, everyone. All right, the floor is yours. Okay, I will share my screen. So, first of all, good morning, everybody, and um, thanks for the organization, especially to the Baltic German Chamber of Commerce, as well as uh, for the, to the team of Energiewächter. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to have the possibility to represent GetAir and its products to this great audience today. Thanks for having me in. So my name is Sebastian Müller. I work for GetAir um, since 2019 and I'm responsible for our cooperation partners or international cooperation partners in the Baltic States. We are just at the beginning with our product and we would like to take the opportunity to enhance and bring our technology into this nice area. So, about GetAir itself. GetAir is a traditional Germany family business. Our headquarter is located in Mönchengladbach. This is in um, yeah, the west part of Germany, quite, quite close to Düsseldorf. So you can reach it by, by plane to the Düsseldorf International Airport. And then it's just 15 to 20 minutes to go. Um, and the Get Air company is, uh, is running in the third ownership, uh, ownership at the moment, and we are 100% based on equity capital. Further, Get Air is known, uh, let's say, as a technology and innovation leader in the field of decentralized home ventilation, and our uh, vision is to have 100% pure air for everybody. And while we focus on a decentralized home ventilation business, the brand or the company GetAir itself is 
just around eight years young, but we can benefit of over 60 years of experience in the production of um, plastic components for the ventilation business. An example for the industrial or for RG culture or automotive. So we also have a very deep vertical production. We have our own um, plastic injection molding line or extrusion line, which makes us very flexible. So as technology and innovation leader, you can imagine that, uh, let's say, the R&D is the heart of the company. So we have a huge team of German and international scient um, scientists and engineers working in our headquarter in Mönchengladbach. And we have our own laboratories as well as 3D printers to be flexible for prototyping and further tests. And under the lead of our uh, head of R&D, Dr. Robert Heinze, we do cooperate with some leading universities in Germany. Here are just some examples of those. Um, if you have a look to the University in Düsseldorf, which is common for flute mechanics and acoustics, or the Bergische University in Wuppertal, they are, let's say, focused on filtration engineering because we always have the target yeah, to develop and to, to research new technologies to improve the products, to be very silent and efficient. Our products are mainly developed in Germany and also produced in Germany. So we have the highest quality standard and uh, we are focused also on sustainable materials and technologies. And um, further, I would like to highlight that all the values we do advertise like volume flow or let's say the noise level, which starts from 11 dB only. We have test institute, uh, we have certificates from independent test institutes to uh, validate this also. So we are coming now to a point, a very interesting survey has been done. And the question was, what do you estimate how many yeah, percentage of the, of, the, of the day you spend indoor? And the average answer was 66% we spent indoor, but in reality, it is 90% and we only spent 10% of the day outside. So if we now have a look, all of us or the most of us will sit inside in buildings, in home office or in the company. Or if you go for shopping, we do it mainly in the big shopping malls nowadays. Um, if you do sports, yeah, most of us, okay, you can go out running, but a lot prefer the running belt. You go to the gym, you are again inside. So we develop from, let's say, outdoor specialist to an indoor specialist. <clears throat> but what most of the people are not aware of that the indoor air can be up to five or 10 times higher polluted than the outdoor air. Of course, it depends on which area your, uh, your building or your dwelling is located. But beside mold and moisture issues with which you are which you will face uh, if you have not a well ventilated building, of course we have too high, too high CO2 levels, radon gas coming from the ground of VOCs which can come from furniture or cleaning materials, odors, and all those um, are not good for our let's say well being. If we have a look, why is fresh air so important? So you can say. Don't forget to drink your water, which uh, all of us know this sentence. And uh, yeah, we have to drink two and a half liters approximately per day. While if you compare, we breathe up to 10,000 liters fresh air every day. And oxygen is, you can say, the basis of all the yeah, human body processes. It reduces stress symptoms. It keeps us concentrated. Um, further, it can reduce also the risk of asthma, an example. And if we think now, okay, what can be done inside the buildings? One solution can be to install a decentralized heat recovery system with optimized uh, controlled sensor ventilation with heat recovery. It further enables you or provides you more safety and security because you can keep the windows closed and you always have a fresh air. It reduced on top of this dust and pollen or the pollution in, inside in general. Here we have a look at uh, the Get Air Smart Fan, which is the smallest, quietest, and most efficient ventilation system with heat recovery in its class. 
we have here a look uh, uh, to some of, let's say, the key facts. So the system itself is based on a 160 millimeters core drill only. It's very easy to, to plan and also to install, um, independent if you are, let's say, in new construction or in renovation, um, improving of existing buildings. We can achieve up to 91% heat recovery and in the summer months, also the opposite way around. It also gives you back, let's say, a little bit cooling. And further to this, it is very easy to install because we have a bus system installed in the system, which makes it able to have a flexible wiring. Means you don't need to, to connect each fan to the control unit and then to the next, you can go in serial or in raw installation, as an example. On top of this, we have the possibility to, um, let's say, improve this fan by installing this small plug-in uh, sensor, which is located directly at the fan unit itself, means in your wall. So this sensor enables to, to have an automatic mode. You can adjust target setting, which you see in the, in the bottom. Uh, you can say you wish to have 40 to 60 percent of humidity as a target and 20 percent as a target inside temperature and the sensor is monitoring the exhaust air as well as the supply air while this is is ongoing it continuously knows what is the outside condition and the inside condition and then the system automatically and fully autark chooses the best possible ventilation speed level and mode to achieve this target the further very nice advantage of this product is that you can create zones. That means you have, let's say, three zones. You have your sleeping room, your kids' room, and your living room. And each of those zones can be controlled individually. That means, in example, you have in the living room a high demand of fresh air. You can run the system on ventilation speed level three. And while the kid is sleeping, you just run it on humidity protection level one which ensures that there is not too much CO2 and a good air quality, but it's very silent. It starts from 11 dB. Uh, Sebastian, just one more minute left. Yes, okay. And uh, it's also the last two slides now. Um, so of, of course, we are also able to control our system by an app device. It's called the smart control. Here you can have a look how it will look like. And um, the nice thing is you can also control the system from external. If you're on vacation or if you're in the office, you have the possibility, let's say I come home in two, two hours, please make 50 minutes full ventilation. You have a very fresh dwelling when you come home. The app displays also temperature, humidity and air quality because the smart control has B-side humidity and temperature also a VOC sensor. And then you can choose between all the modes and um, yeah, switch between the zones, make, let's say, a programmable schedule for the whole week. Okay, and here at the end, you have a status about filter uh, usage because it needs to be exchanged sometimes, or let's say to clean it. And all this is possible by your mobile phone. It uses your, your home Wi-Fi network or external access by mobile data. Yes. Okay. So I hope you did enjoy the presentation and I would like to, uh, I'm very happy to receive your feedback and any kind of questions. I'm available through the whole next two weeks for also B2B um sessions and looking forward to receive your feedback thanks a lot for your attention thank you sebastian yeah it's good that you mentioned those uh one-on-one -on -one meetings uh yes so those who haven't yet applied to b2b meetings they can still do that uh just approach your local uh german uh, baltic uh, chamber of commerce uh, branch so we shall continue and our next company is focusing on climate active coatings and they represented by detlef steiert Hello. Howdy here, and thank you for the organization to the RK and to the uh, company Energiewächter. I will present you in uh, seven minutes the paintable solution. It is um, 
everybody talked about energy saving in buildings and most people think that we save energy by insulation. Our material is not an insulation material. This is very important to know before we go step by step to the next parts. It is a, it's a coating and uh, the coating is only 0.3 millimeter thick. So that is the biggest difference to an insulation material. And uh, the way to save energy is very different to insulation material. Short pictures to the company. We are placed in Germany. We produce and development in uh, Berlin, from Berlin. And uh, yeah, we are in a small company with 15 employees only. But uh, we have um, distributor worldwide, and uh, we are looking also for partners in the Baltic countries. I would like to start with facts. The result of uh, our material for outside, uh, you can see here in Sweden, is a big building complex with flats and uh, a result of energy saving only by a coating, it's uh, 13%. And the same we have also in Lithuania from uh, the time of uh, 2030 and 2014, this was 13%. Maybe it is not so much, but uh, it is a question about also the relation between cost and result. We have a wide range of products for different um, application for inside, for outside, for wood, for facade, for roof, and so on. And uh, if you are interested in more information, of course, we can discuss this in the B2B business um, talks. And uh, what is the normal situation? We have a wall and we have bricks and plaster and the sun radiation and the humidity goes from outside to inside. And you can see uh, the wall is filled with a little bit humidity and humidity is the best transportation medium for warm radiation. And if we go to the dew point, then you can see maybe we have outside a uh, high temperature in the summertime and uh, also a uh, high humidity, then the pressure is from outside to inside and all the rooms will be warm up more and more and we need energy to cool down. And if we have a coating outside with our products, you have first a big uh, sunlight reflection and the second is that the humidity can go cannot go through the, the plaster and the bricks to the inside of the house and uh, we call as a hygroscopic diode you can see here the humidity go not through so another relation or other sample is uh, that we call it also in uh, dental blind, the sunlight reflected and the humidity from the wall can go out. And the same is on the roof. And we have an extra effect. We have a cooling effect in the summertime by evaporation. Here we have a short um, graphic to show you the 
function of the reflective membrane for the outside function. You can see we have included small ceramic bubbles and uh, the drying process is by capillary drying. So what is inside? Inside we have other situation. Normally you have a heater and you have your room with the uh, temperature you would like to have on around about 22 degrees. And you have a big difference in the room. You have on the, in the middle of the, of the room, 22 degrees, and all the energy you need to hold this temperature goes also on the ceiling. And then we have a big problem from the, uh, um, from the uh, heater, the warm air goes round from the top back to the, to the um, top, uh, to the bottom. And in the corner, we have not the same temperature. And this is the cool, co uh, the cool area here in this corner, and this is the place for building mold, for example. And if you can applicate the room with our material, then we have inside in the room um, diffuse reflection of the warm radiation. And then it is possible to come also in this, in this corner here and the temperature difference between up and down, it's not so high. And in the end of the day, you need not so much energy for the, for the holding of the, the, the same temperature between uh, the ceiling and the floor. Detlef, uh, could we finish in about two minutes, if possible? Yes, Thanks. yes. Okay, uh, then you can see here a little bit more about tests and facts. So we have won two awards in 2018 also, our international certificate by um, the United Laboratory. It's the Green Guard Gold certification for our products. So this is short for you to see what we have for benefits. And we are also certificate by ISO 2001 for quality and ISO 2000, uh, 13001 for environmental management. And uh, I thank you for your time and the question open, of course, and we can talk about later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Detlef. Uh, yeah, all the questions and comments, please uh, address to Detlef in B2B meetings. Um, if you meet Detlef or if uh, haven't, you haven't yet applied to meet Detlef, maybe after this presentation, uh, you will. Uh, thank you for the animations. I think it was very uh, good way of uh, showing how the coating works. Uh, quite uh, quite uh, impressive. Thank you for that. All right, our next speaker is Jürgen Koberland uh, from a company that uh, deals with all kinds of construction, residential, churches, municipal, commercial, uh, everything in that spectrum. Jürgen, the floor is yours. Uh, welcome uh, from Germany to all the organizers of the conference, to all participants. And now I am starting with my presentation. So let's hear it. With this full screen now. Okay. So, hello, good morning. My topic is the interdisciplinary approaches for innovative and sustainable and economic energy concepts. You know the title of this uh, conference. And uh, let me begin with a small introduction on then renewable energies, intelligent energy concepts, examples and summary. Uh, founded in uh, the engineering office of uh, Köberlein is um, 
gained uh, has gained 50 years of experience in the field of building technology such as heating ventilation sanitary electrical engineering as well over the years we changed it to uh, energy concepts and um, the purest form of insanity is to leave everything the same and the same time hope that things will change what does that mean uh, let us go uh, to to the energy discussion, the energy uh, supply of Lithuania and Estonia. And when we are talking about energy, energy must be regional, uh, regional and economical. A universal solution is non-existent. Uh, energy region provides different resources and sustainable solutions are unique solutions. That means you cannot uh, have a solution which works in one country and bring it to another. No, that means you have to transform the solutions uh, and adapt it uh, to the people which are living in this country. Uh, and furthermore, the sol uh, solutions must be su sustainable. Sustainable means uh, it must be economical, ecological, and social accepted. I uh, give you in a short way some examples of that. When we are talking, I have had a project in Germany, uh, which is a uh, house like this. And we are talking about uh, the solar energy, the PV solar energy. And uh, the traditional way to integrate it, it uh, to bring it on the roof uh, of the building. But uh, with this building, there's not enough space with that. And at um, the first step, when we are uh, at talking about the solution, or we'll try to find solutions, why uh, don't we integrate this into the facade, for example? And at the first step, we use the software to simulate it. For example, I have here um, simulated uh, at the um, city of Würzburg in the middle of Germany compared with uh, Tallinn and Vilnius. And the um, PV solar energy is very interesting because it's in the range of up to uh, lower 15%. And um, this is an attractive uh, method to integrate it, this. I give you an example of the results for that. When you, uh, when you have uh, for a public building, uh, also as well as private buildings, um, PV integration into the facade, it brings up to 60% more just only one solution on the top. And combined, we had it uh, on the um, two lectures before, uh, combined with the heat pump, for example, it is um, an attractive solution for that. Uh, then we have a small startup company here, very close to Germany, uh, which are uh, have, um, it's an obvious company, which have, um, modules which you can bring it over over different facades it is printed with with a printer it's organic on the basis of organic that's not so much power at the end but uh, you bring the technique uh, the architecture and the art together with this uh, product for example at the end we, uh, or we have to think about um, how we would like to live in future in my opinion, we have to reduce. We need uh, low invest solutions. We have to about what is absolutely necessary and what not. And, and now you have another product. Uh, it's uh, also from a startup company in Germany. You know this traditional way of installation. And then with a product of home way, you can simplify it because you have one basis module and uh, you have one basis and you integrated some different modules and then you have um, very attractive solutions and that way that you only buy what you need. I give you two examples of the home way product We have the range, uh, range extension. On the left side, that means with the home way access points, you can su supplement, uh, supplement the Wi Fi. Uh, where your central Wi-Fi router does not provide sufficient coverage because floor and ceilings are often impenetrable, for example. And on the right side, uh, on the right side, you can say it's uh, adaptable. That means uh, the dimmable Wi-Fi uh, can you just, uh, touch with the Wi-Fi function. The transmission power is dimmable. The Wi-Fi uh, in a radiation reduced and controlled manner. Smart integration in the homeway selling. It, uh, it's a simultaneous dual band for 5 and 2.4 gigahertz. 
and it's integrated in a kind X and Luxon, for example. And what we are also doing in our, our office is uh, the BIM uh, construction, the BIM design, because why it is interesting, you can use your smartphone and scan your code, for example, on the, the right side. And then you can see a simulation uh, at the result when you are starting with the project, with the design to talk with the customers on the on, you can uh, talk and you can show uh, in between uh, a little bit more results who, how it could be. And uh, these uh, are kind of design uh, gives us the flexibility to calculate not only the investment costs, although the lifetime cost, which is interesting for an investor, how much is the investment, the maintenance, energy cost of the complete lifetime of this. And with BIM, we can do that uh, for the customers. At the end, uh, why EBK? Many years of experience with innovative technology and renewable energies, goal-oriented project processing through iterative planning processes, Simultaneous of targets already in the design phase. You have shown it on the slide before. Good uh, cloud solutions as common workspaces um, on the right side. We are looking for um, we are looking for um, a lot, or, or the market in Lithuania and Estonia have a lot of jobs, a business market, investors, and private and municipal levels, optimization of existing plans, high saving potentials, and as well uh, training and know how transfer to universities. Uh, we have innovative concepts, cooperation with companies, maximum economics, low investment. Thank you so much for your attention. At this point, you have uh, here my telephone or my WhatsApp number. You can contact me anytime if you have uh, the questions or in the B2B meetings. Um, at the end, on the left, we have renewable energies are a great beneficial challenge. High uh, carbon dioxide savings possible with less investment, know-how transfer with, for more efficiency in economy. Keep on the good work. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Jürgen. Uh, thank you very much for a very quick presentation and very clear call to action. We have a fourth and the last uh, pitch uh, from German companies in this block. Uh, that's a research-driven manufacturer of, of uh, advanced uh, building materials. And you already saw Wolfgang uh, a bit earlier. So Wolfgang, I wonder how uh, the... Okay, right. fine. Yes, we want to introduce uh, another technology here, uh, which works on the surface and uh, which is under the headline low emitting uh, smart coating. Uh, in this way, of course, uh, the, all the technologies uh, which uh, were introduced uh, now before my uh, presentation uh, are heavily supported by this technology um, in order to obtain, uh, let's say, off-grid situations. <clears throat> Um, just uh, we are two owners. Uh, we are 20 years old. We started our business with chromium six reducing, which is a law now in uh, Europe. And in 2006, we started to develop this special smart coatings and smart uh, plasters. Um, these are the fields we uh, we are covering. These are part of our clients. Uh, but I want to come to the coating itself now. Uh, what we are influencing are mainly six parameters. The main parameter is water. Water is the energy transporter and responsible for all hygienic and biological situations um, in uh, all directions, industrial, building-wise, and um, uh, and uh, so if we talk about reflecting, energy reflecting surface, we have to first uh, solve the problem of uh, water because uh, dry surfaces will reflect energy, wet surfaces will absorb energy. So this is the main function and this is exactly what we did. Uh, I can demonstrate you on a, uh, on, on a 0 0.4 millimeter coating how it works. Here it's a normal dispersion paint, which is cold, uh, which is absorbing your skin temperature. This is the MIG coating, which is reflecting the skin temperature and you feel it warm. 
So we leave the energy there where it is. Definitely, uh, it doesn't matter cooling or heating. Uh, on this way, we also won uh, four years European um, uh, um, program, which was uh, done under the umbrella of Horizon 2020. And uh, we uh, won this uh, competition as a key innovator for active facade insulation systems. And you can find us there on innoradar.eu. Uh, the next is heat and fire. Uh, heat, of course, uh, here in wintertime, also in the Balticum, in wintertime to support um, uh, the heating um, um, action. Um, by reducing the heating cost uh, between between 20 and 40 percent. Dust uh, also, um, we heard uh, from uh, Fresh Air, Sebastian Müller, everything about dust. Uh, we can contribute here that we keep the dust on the floor. Normally between uh, floor and ceiling are three to five degrees different. We reduce it down to less than one degree. In this way, we don't have the dust thermic anymore and this uh, reflects on the air quality, definitely. And uh, all the parameters uh, which were um, mentioned by fresh air, Sebastian Müller, uh, will be uh, reduced and the air quality will definitely improve. That you will see when you have two rooms, one coated with our smart coating, one non-coated, you enter the rooms and you will feel the difference immediately. On the sound, the sound will be distributed on our surface differently. Um, so we will lower the uh, noise level. And uh, another effect we found out over all the years, people with, uh, uh, with ear support um, uh, do hear on both ears the same noise, the same decibel noise. So not on one ear, ear more and one ear, ear less. The light we improved by 30% because of the uh, high reflection rate in the visible area of IR radiation, which is between 500 and 700 nanometer. In this way, the rooms are becoming bigger or appearing bigger because of better lightning. Odour is a very important stuff, especially in uh, flats and basements and uh, kitchens, um, uh, hotels, uh, nearly everywhere. So we neutralize the door in a very short period of time. You will see that on the movie we will show you. Uh, these are few applications, also technical applications. Everything concerning condensed water also applies to cars and uh, aircrafts. Uh, heat conductivity, of course, heat conductivity with water is much uh, uh, higher than air. Here we have an example of uh, a facade done with MIG and done with uh, 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 high quality dispersion paint. You see here UV radiation is turning the uh, color into gray and uh, the molds are built up. And on our surface, we are completely arc free. Uh, we guarantee that. Also on, um, on um, uh, areas which are uh, shadowed with plants. Here uh, on flooding areas, you see here on the right side is done with MIG, on the left side is not done with MIG. So um, after flooding, uh, the, um, you don't have any, um, uh, any humidity and mold formation anymore. Working principle of DHMB double hybrid membrane technology. Let's observe the humidity in a random room and join a molecule of water vapor on its journey to the surface of a wall coated with our DHMB double hybrid membrane technology. Our double hybrid membrane coating is like a thin film with uniformly distributed pores, which is sealed with a flexible membrane at the bottom. Additionally, the surface of this membrane system is covered with a regular pattern of double hybrid particles, which reflect infrared and ultraviolet radiation. Now the molecule of water vapor penetrates into a pore of the membrane. Once the molecule arrives at the bottom of the pore, the molecule will be catapulted away as if by a trampoline. 
when this happens, infrared energy is transferred from the double hybrid particles to the molecule of water vapor and absorbed. Meanwhile, the molecule of water vapor is repelled from the bottom of the pore. This works like a molecular pump, removing humidity on the wall as a result. The wall is dried, creating a natural insulation system which allows multiple benefits such as keeping mold away and greatly reducing corrosion. Saving energy significantly through reflecting infrared radiation. Ensuring durability of the facade through the DHMB technology which disperses ultraviolet radiation. Subsequently increasing property value and promoting health and well-being for inhabitants. Yeah, this is this is uh, basically how it works, and we have also supported Plaza so for renovations and stuff like this, uh, a complete program. Uh, here are some examples uh, where to apply. We especially also for flat roofs, all kind of roofs, tanks, industrial applications, agriculture, and so on. And because our stuff doesn't emit. Uh, any smell, so we can uh, apply it also during working times. Here you see the difference of a room black and uh, our roof, uh, 55, 28. So this is, uh, if you want to do this with insulation, it's a problem. Uh, this is a complete village we did in China. Uh, this is uh, aluminum heat protection. Um, I will just go through this in order. This is an Indian school in Dubai. Um, there you have the chloride smell and uh, the children have red eyes. So with us, they don't have that anymore. Here is the way how it works with the dust. This is tulips because uh, they feel an artificial sun inside the rooms. This is why they grow up. So the main thing is uh, we are uh, looking at uh, the human first human comfort, and uh, together with this, we uh, influence the economy and ecological situation. Uh, for the uh, dynamic simulation program, uh, what Marco Schmidt was mentioning, of course, we are using that. We are using Wofi Pro. So you can see the, uh, you can, we can calculate your building as well. You just give us the data and we do the calculations. Here are some references outside and inside bakeries, uh, hygienic problem. Um, uh, this is a temple in subtropical climate. Uh, this is industrial application for tobacco plantation for drying tobacco and storing all kinds. This is a school mensa, no smell, no dust. Same. This is the uh, uh, number one uh, building oh, in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, Toha building. Uh, to replace mineral wool against our coating. Wolfgang, uh, just, uh, just, just uh, allow me to jump in. We are very short in time. So okay, uh, I, will, I will finish now. Sure. This is a historical building, which is in the Baltikum as well. Uh, energetic uh, renovation without touching the surf, uh, the face of the building. Um, so also be in a broad base supporting us, but not in Germany. Uh, they are not supporting dynamic simulations. And here, this is Siemens Shanghai. Here you see wet mineral wool replaced by our coating. We are partner of Build Heat. You will find us on innoradar.eu. This is uh, cooling. Cooling is a very big subject. We are uh, doing an, uh, a tremendous energy saving here. Everything which is concerning supermarkets, cold storage, uh, and so on. This uh, um, comparisons uh, to reduce energy from 195,000 to 57,000 only with coating inside. Hygienic matters, uh, 3D buildings. So this is us. We uh, care about health and human being uh, by saving energy at the same time. All right. Thank you, Wolfgang. 
Okay. Lots of impressive work that you have done so far. So uh, I think it's a good opportunity for uh, those who are interested to organize B2B meeting with Wolfgang and uh, discuss uh, further possible cooperation. Uh, my friends, we are behind the schedule, but still we make a five-minute break. We make a five-minute break now, and we, I see you soon. We continue our program with the, uh, the, the case study from Lithuania. See you. Hey, everybody, welcome back to a German, Estonian, uh, Latvian, sorry, Lat Latvian. Well, I know that some Latvians are here also participating, but it's mainly focused on uh, German, Estonian and Lithuanian bonding uh, networking. So the conference plus uh, the trade mission uh, in form of B2B meetings. So uh, once more, a small reminder about B2B meetings. So if you haven't yet applied to them, you can still do that by approaching the German Baltic uh, Chamber of Commerce in your country. Good. Uh, we have uh, our next story from uh, Lithuania. Our next speaker is the Deputy Head of Housing Energy Efficiency Agency in Lithuania, Marius Smajunas. Hello, Marius. Hi. Good, good day. All right. So the floor is yours. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Yes. Yes. Hi. So as already introduced, my name is Marius Smajunas. I represent uh, Energy a Efficiency Agency for Housing uh, in Lithuania. Uh, our agency is shortly called BETA. Uh, well, I currently uh, not a deputy uh, head. I'm currently a head of uh, an interim head of, of this agency. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a short presentation about uh, energy efficiency improve, improvement program for multi-apartment building in Lithuania, buildings in Lithuania. So, uh, so, uh, so what, what does our agency do? We work with, uh, with few different energy efficiency programs for buildings. The biggest uh, program is the renovation uh, of multi-apartment uh, building, buildings program. It uh, has the highest amount of projects uh, and uh, the highest spendings uh, and the biggest impact uh, on energy savings and CO2 savings. And uh, this program is also friendly for families uh, that are experiencing energy poverty. So during my presentation, I will focus on this program. The other programs uh, are smaller, and uh, those programs started only a few years ago. So they are put it on the test to find out uh, whether these ideas work or not. Uh, what also I can add, uh, mm, well, uh, after the, the October, uh, BETA will be integrated into Environmental Project Implementation Agency. Uh, it is shortly called APVA. As you can see in the slide, I wrote it in brackets. Uh, this agency is bigger than, uh, than BETA and has more environmental uh, project activities. Uh, so it is uh, probably a proper decision to consolidate these two agencies um, as both of them uh, belongs uh, to the same Ministry of Environment. Uh, after the consolidation, uh, uh, better staff uh, will be working uh, in separate uh, department uh, uh, for energy efficiency in buildings. So uh, we're hoping uh, the best uh, from this consolidation. Uh, the first attempts in, in, in renovation in Lithuania of uh, the first attempts in uh, in renovation of multi apartment buildings. Uh, started in 1995. Uh, well, since uh, 2004, we have a, a program for renewing these multi-apartment buildings. Uh, so our program is intended uh, for buildings built before 1993. And uh, until this year in Lithuania, we did not have any standards for energy efficiency for buildings. And these buildings were built, uh, uh, and these buildings uh, built before 1993 are usually very poorly isolated. And well, now we are rediscussing this uh, requirement because since 2021, uh, it is required to build only passive houses in Lithuania with uh, energy efficiency class A++. 
and uh, the buildings built since 1993 and um, especially until 2004 usually are also poorly isolated and in order for high energy efficiency uh, in the building sector we need to modernize more buildings uh, and uh, the purpose of energy efficiency program is to increase the energy efficiency of the most heat consuming apartment buildings before getting into some details of multi-apartment building renovation program, I would like to highlight the structure of the ownership in these buildings in Lithuania because it is very different uh, if, for example, we compare it to Germany. Uh, in, if the building is uh, has three or more apartments, it is considered as a multi-apartment building in Lithuania. Uh, and, uh, well, in more than 98% of these buildings uh, can actually be described as a condominium buildings uh, uh, where different units or different apartments are owned uh, by different persons. This makes the renovation pro process harder to start when you have lots of people who have to agree on renovating the building. So how does the renovation model work? Uh, so firstly, a maintenance company that is administering, administering the multi-apartment building has to prepare an, an investment plan for renovation. Uh, the configuration of the investment plan is, regula is, is regulated by, uh, by some legislation uh, provided by the Ministry of Environment and has the strict requirements for costs, measures, and other important information. When the investment plan is prepared, uh, it has to be approved by the majority of the apartment building owners. So they have to, they have also appoint a company that will implement the project. Usually it will be the same maintenance company that uh, administrates the building currently. So if the, if the majority of uh, uh, homeowners decides to vote uh, for the investment plan, it has to be approved uh, by our agency, by BETA. And uh, if it was approved, uh, as uh, consider considerable, as reasonable, uh, the administrator may start the procurement process that includes uh, uh, the procurement processes includes uh, buying preparation of uh, technical documentation, uh, supervision of the construction works, and also uh, the construction company. So when the technical drawings are prepared, uh, the procurement for the construction company is set to go. And uh, if all the procurements were a success, uh, then the bank may provide the credit uh, for the hard investment. Uh, the hard investment, I mean the construction works. If the credit is approved, um, then the construction works uh, start, starts immediately and the funding and, uh, and the, the construction works will be funded by the credit every month. Uh, the preparation of technical detail, uh, technical documentation, uh, supervision and uh, of construction works and other administering costs are covered by the state subsidy. And when the project is finished, uh, the administrator may apply for the uh, subsidy for the construction works. So, uh, uh, as I said, our program is uh, set uh, for apartment buildings uh, built uh, before 1993. And uh, after the renovation, uh, the modernized building has to reach at least energy efficiency class C. And the calculated thermal energy efficiency savings uh, have to uh, be at least uh, 40%. Residents uh, must approve the apartment renovation project by a majority of the votes. And uh, as already mentioned, uh, they will get 100% uh, state uh, support for costs for technical documentation, supervision of works, and project administration. 
If uh, the administrator uh, decides to take a loan from a bank, uh, he may get uh, a loan uh, that is actually provided uh, by the state. So uh, the credit uh, will uh, uh, the credit may be provided with a fixed three uh, percent annual interest rates for the first five years, and uh, when the project is finished, uh, uh, the administrator may apply for thirty percent of modern of for full modernization costs. Uh, uh, I mean, for the construction works. So. Usually the credit is repaid in uh, over 20 years. Uh, and also what I forgot to mention is that cultural heritage houses, uh, uh, they have uh, lower requirements. Uh, we do not require for them to achieve energy efficiency class C. Uh, we say that it's enough for them uh, to renovate uh, and to reach at least 25% of energy savings. It is because usually uh, heritage buildings, uh, they have uh, no possibilities to insulate uh, uh, walls. So that means uh, that they usually cannot uh, reach energy efficiency class C. As I already mentioned, uh, it was that uh, the program uh, you know, works with poor families that are dealing with energy poverty. So every person in Lithuania having hard times may apply for social support. And if the person has low income, uh, for example, if I lose my job uh, today, uh, I will lose my income and uh, in uh, few months I may uh, apply for this uh, support so so if I have this low income then uh, then I may be provided with uh, social support to cover my energy bills so if uh, if there's such a person uh, lives in a house uh, that is renovated or is still under the construction he has uh, to pay his credit uh, every month and uh, the cred credit costs uh, may be covered uh, uh, as long as uh, he's considered a low income person. At the same day, uh, when I get job and uh, I st start uh, to getting, getting my salary, uh, this uh, social support will be removed. So I will lose uh, the support if my income are already at no uh, in normal rate. It is important to mention that uh, if such a person votes against the renovation, uh, then he may lose his social support uh, because the, the state uh, does not uh, is not willing to support energy wasting in uh, in unrenovated buildings. So. In 2013, we started a new uh, renovation uh, model. Mm, so as you can see in this graph, uh, the amount of uh, implemented projects uh, rise in more than 80%, uh, but the results are uh, still insufficient because uh, in the FENA, we uh, have more than 30,000 multi-apartment buildings that are built uh, uh, before 1993. And these are only multi-apartment buildings. And also, as I mentioned, we have uh, poorly isolated buildings built uh, after 1993 uh, until 2004. So these uh, buildings have also already to be renovated. So uh, the, build, uh, the fund of buildings uh, is aging and we need to find a better way how to renovate more buildings. So the Ministry of Environment uh, is even discussing um, the demolition of some buildings. But uh, as I mentioned before, it is hard to do so when there is private property everywhere. And in one building, you may have even uh, up to 100 or 150 homeowners. So let's discuss uh, the digits, uh, the numbers, uh, the renovation uh, model we have now, I already told you, started in 2013. And uh, since then, we finished uh, over 
2700 projects uh, and uh, it included 75,000 apartments or we can say 75,000 families. Uh, so totally uh, uh, we invest uh, totally homeowners invested 700 million euros into these projects where uh, uh, when all the money was provided by the by the credit and every year the renovated buildings save uh, around 765 gigawatt hour of thermal energy and uh, emits uh, 180 thousand tons less of, of co2 so today we have around uh, 1700 uh, projects that are approved by homeowners and around 500 of these projects are currently under construction so that includes about around 57 uh, uh, thousand apartments and uh, the investment needed, we already calculated that for these projects, we need around 760 million euros. So, but the amount of that project uh, is not good enough uh, because I already told you we have around 30,000 old multi-apartment buildings that needs to be renovated or, or demolished by 2050. And that means that uh, we need to renovate at least a thousand building every buildings every year and usually as we we saw uh latest years we may we may renovate around 300 buildings uh, yearly uh, so this is uh, why ministry of environment hopes that the consolidation of uh, two different agencies will uh, give us some breakthrough A uh, typical project, a uh, typical project usually uh, has an average investment of two, uh, 280,000 euros. Uh, and typical, I mean, is uh, a multi-apartment building built before 1993 and usually has around uh, from 35 to 50 apartments. Uh, usually, uh, average investment into one square meter is around 300 uh, euros and uh, uh, one apartment has to uh, take a loan for 12,000 euros. Uh, well, <clears throat> our program uh, made a significant effect for the economy. Uh, and since 2013, uh, as I already told you, we invested around 700 million euros. And this is more than 30% of last year's turnover in the construction sector. And uh, this, is, this process involved 300 construction companies uh, uh, that created 40,000 new uh, jobs. And... Uh, uh, usually, when you renovate the building, uh, the value of apartment uh, in the renovated house uh, increases around twenty, uh, from twenty to twenty-five percent. Every year, we monitor our program result results, and according to the last annual energy Wood report. All the buildings renewed since 2013 uh, have an average savings uh, of 63%, while the minimum amount uh, they have to reach was just 40%. So some buildings uh, reach savings even uh, of 70%, and uh, the highest savings we saw was 87%. So yeah. Uh, for example, if you have to pay 400 euros for heating yearly, uh, then uh, uh, you can reduce your payments in 60%. So that's uh, around 120 euros uh, after the renovation. So you save around 280 euros yearly on the renovation, uh, on, on the energy costs. Uh, so that's more than 50% savings. Marius, we have uh, like one, two minutes, if possible. Okay, I'm already finishing. Uh, so 
uh, as for more, uh, our agency is organizing uh, public information activities uh, because as we saw in 2013, people did not trust the renovation process. And uh, well, actually in 2011, about, uh, we made a survey and about, about 93% of uh, multi-apartment uh, resident, uh, residents were skeptical about the renovation process. So in order to change that skeptical attitude, uh, the public uh, information activities uh, was very important for us. And in 2020, uh, we made a new survey. And uh, what we saw was that uh, about 77% of multi-apartment buildings said that they would support the idea of renovation. So, uh, uh, um, so uh, this public information activities actually was a success in Lithuania. Uh, well, I have a few uh, few examples, uh, but uh, uh, because of lack of, of time, I will not uh, stop on them. But I will, uh, you will probably get the slides and you may uh, just uh, see them. And if you need uh, to ask any questions, these are my contacts. So uh, please uh, call me, write me an email, and uh, I'll provide you uh, more information if you need. All right, let's do that. Thank you, Marius, so much. Actually, there are some questions also in Q&A box. So if I may ask you, Marius, could you answer them in written form here yes. in Zoom? Yes, I can. Great, great. Thanks a lot for that. All right. Um, and now we jump to the second block of uh, German company companies' presentations. Uh, according to the program, there are four, but uh, Frank Lindner couldn't uh, be uh, with us today in this presentation but he's still up uh, for B2B meetings, so no worries for that. So we will have three presentations, uh, first being uh, run by Matthias Teller. I saw Matthias already uh, ready uh, with the camera on, uh, so we can uh, now start with his presentation. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I hope everybody can see my presentation. Yes. Um, yes, my name is Matthias. I am the head of sales of the company Deutsche Energiesysteme GmbH. Uh, we are based in Berlin in Germany and we are a company that is operating since 2017. And I will talk to you about smart heating solution for electrified heating supply. So uh, our mission is that we are working on the integration of the heating and renewable electricity sector. And our, our goal is to add to the decarbonization of heat generation. And what we also want to add is a technical value for the energy transition. And of course, also economic benefits for the real estate market and the people who are living in the houses. So our system that we are providing is called R Electra. This is the brand name of the system. And the system um, yeah, is containing three components. The first main component is a carbon and PET heating membrane. Uh, the second component is the power supply because our heating membrane is working with 36 volt DC. And the third component of course is the control of the system. But here we have an open interface for the control engineering. That means that we can embed our system in any kind of environment we find. Uh, that means that we can use control units from uh, third parties or other brands. But of course, we have our, also our own control system. But as I said, the open interface is very important for us. Then we can add our system to the technical environment we find. If you look at our heating system at a glance, uh, first of all, uh, as I said, we are working with a heating membrane. We can see it maybe in the back of me. Uh, it's a carbon and PET uh, heating uh, resistance, and uh, it converts electrical energy into 100% heat. And we can adapt our system or the heating membrane to the property because we have different performance variants of the heating membrane. And what the heating membrane is emitting is radiant heat for the best feel good climate. Uh, radiant heat is, or infrared heat is very, very good for your body and your health. 
And one uh, big uh, advantage of our system is also that it's a maintenance free system. So once you have installed the heating system in your house, you do not have to touch it anymore. And as we are not using any pipes, boilers or pumps, and it has a long service life. So we give a guarantee of uh, 10 years for the system. And uh, yeah, so that's at a glance. Um, our system is very adaptable. So if you uh, look at our concept, which is heating on demand, that means that we are uh, using the big advantage of our system, which is the fast reaction time. Uh, and we uh, uh, offer a very modular and precise control for this heating on demand uh, approach. So we offer a maximum accuracy of fit between the heat demand of a room of our building and the installed power. That means that our system is never oversized or undersized. And uh, the heating membrane can be very, very fast and easily installed on walls, ceilings, or under the floor. So our system adapts to the requirements we find and not the other way around. Uh, our system is very compatible. It's 100% compatible to all the stakeholders and technology technologies and the energy transition. For example, we can couple our systems with battery technology. We can couple it with photovoltaic. We can uh, link it to uh, smart meter systems and of course to smart building. Um, as we have this open interface for the control, it is also 100% open for all future developments. Uh, it is 100% digital and smart home ready. And if we are operating it with electricity from renewable resources, it is 100% emission free. Uh, our system is very, very uh, scalable. That means that we uh, do not only take care of the building itself, we also look beyond the building. So we can use our system for the implementation in demand site management. We can contribute to a crit stabilization as our system um, has a storage effect on the building material and can switch off uh, up to three hours without a loss of comfort. Um, we can regard it as a new CO2 approach for district heating when we run it with wind power, for example. And um, yes, we enable also sustainable solutions for smart neighborhood or smart city approaches. Our system is also entitled for funding, so it is um, conform with the directive of the European Union on energy performance of buildings. And we can also meet uh, the standards of the German efficiency um, approach. So for example, uh, we can meet the efficiency standards of the GEG, which means Gebäude Energie Gesetz. And also funding is possible uh, by the German development bank KFW. And if you look at the table, of course, we have to implement our system in a certain technical environment. For example, you can look here, if we are coupling it with photovoltaic and a heat recovery system and a hot water heat pump, we can reach uh, the best KFW standard. We have already references in the Baltic region. For example, our first B2Z project to get a pilot project on the road was done in 2018. It was um, installed in an existing building in Pure in Latvia. And also uh, we have now uh, finished uh, in this year, a new building project. It's also a B2C, a B2C project. And uh, here you can see in 2018, we have installed our system as a ceiling heating system in an existing building. It was a refurbishment project. And in uh, 2021, we have finished it as a floor and a wall heating system. And um, yeah, so we are very flexible. We can um, adapt um, our installation to the needs of the customer. And uh, if a customer, for example, wants a ceiling heating, then we can uh, achieve it. Or if the customer wants to have a mix of floor and wall or ceiling or whatever, we are very flexible. 
So in the, uh, the future in the Baltic region, we see uh, four main approaches. The first of all is the replacement of old oil and gas heating system in existing buildings. Also the replacement of old electrical heating systems. Um, we can also think about the usage of wind power for CO2 free heating. We can uh, talk about uh, heating of new low energy buildings with a very, very uh, low demand for heat with a low technical impact. So um, our system has a very low technical impact. So we need no pumps, no boilers, no pipes. And uh, it's very easy to install and very fast to install. And of course, our heating on demand approach is a very good approach for public buildings like schools, for example, hospitals, or for buildings in commercial use. Yeah, that's what my, my uh, presentation. Uh, I hope that our technical technology finds your interest. And if there are any questions or remarks, I am here to discuss with you. And I'm looking forward also to the B2B meetings. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Matthias, uh, thank you so much. Actually, there is a remark from uh, Brigitte. It's like a question, so you can see it in Q&A box and uh, answer her. It's about pricing, <laughs> right. Uh, let's move on. Our next presentation is from the company that is focused on energy harvesting and also uh, on building security te technology. So Jan Schoetze, um, the floor is yours. Yeah, so um, hi and welcome to this presentation. My name is Miranda van Mensvoort and this is Jan Schoetze. And we are a part of, uh, yeah, we're members of uh, Megafunk. So our company develops uh, products, uh, products in energy harvesting, security and wireless technology. Uh, in the next eight minutes, we will present a unique product and the platform around it uh, and how you can use it to extend your portfolio. And later, my co-worker Jan uh, will show you the model and how it works. Just a few years ago, the value of things was defined by the object itself. So functionality, materials and quality. So services and communication were rarely an important part of this. In the world we live on now, communication has become more important and we want our products to talk to each other. We've came up with one solution and one platform with endless possibilities. So we've designed and created um, a platform and a product with limitless potential when it comes to smart devices and smart solutions. The product which we redeveloped is a smart socket. The socket consists of two parts, giving you great control and customizable options. Place the outer box of the socket and decide later which function you want to give it. With a simple turning motion, you can turn a power socket into a switch, a motion detector, a lamp box, or to use it for tech authentication or as a spotlight. And these are just a few options of all the possibilities. A quality product with excellent German technology and timeless Dutch design that fits in every house, office and public space, allowing you to control whatever you desire. Modify the color or the material to fit different sceneries. The socket makes it possible to work out the concept of every interior design down to the smallest detail. Um, the flexibility is what makes this socket so unique and smart. In order to understand how this product works, we will have a look at how it's installed. Um, what makes the socket so different to any other socket is that it uses her own flush mounted box, which is green here on the screen. A company will connect the cable to the back of the socket and install the flush mounted box into the wall or the ceiling or etc. And then an outer ring will be placed on the flush mounted box and this is the base of the socket which stays in the wall permanently. The next step um, is the inner part which is flexible to modify to your needs. With a simple turning motion, you can easily take out the inner part and put another one in with a different function. 
With this base, the user can turn the socket into a power outlet, a switch, a light, and so on. Before we have a look on the actual socket, I want to tell you something about the platform around it. So the platform around the socket is what makes the product so unique. And there are certain smart features which you can use the platform for. Think about power monitoring and control, authorization and identification, smart building and smart home, and much more. So use the uh, platform to extend one of your own products. The features and the possibilities are endless. Think about power monitoring and control. So measure power consumption, control power consumption, and power on demand, for example, uh, e-bikes. Authorization and identification, so you can control time, uh, so it's a time control system. You have access to the control system and a paid option for power on demand. A smart building and home, tech, track and control air quality and connected with other systems like Alexa or Siri and the parent control system. Uh, my coworker Jan will show you now how the model of the socket works live and um, yeah, and tell you a bit more about it. So, I just uh, stopped the screen sharing right now. Do, 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 do. No. I think everyone can see me right now. Or yeah, we see you both. Yes. Ah, perfect, perfect. Okay, yes. I just want to uh, show you a little bit about the platform and how it works. Actually, uh, it's quite simple, and there are yeah endless possibility what you can do out of this platform. You can extend uh, your own product. You can uh, put your own application in there for some controlling system or for something else. I just want to uh, show you. It's. I hope you you can see it right now. Also, this one is right. Uh, mountain yeah a mountain box which stays all the time in the wall so you only have to install it one time and then you can with your own application which is this for example here it's a power circuit you just put it in there oh so it's yeah. you just put it in there Turn it around and it stays in there. And now if you want to change it, for example, and you say, okay, oh, I don't need a power circuit right now. I need a light, for example, or a motion detector or something else. You take it off, put the motion sensor in, turn it, and it works. Even with TAC, for, for example, a power on demand, for example, e-bikes is also a nice application or a nice example. Uh, if you go to a, to a restaurant and you want to charge your e-bike, for example, you can use this kind of platform with a tech identification to say, okay, this, uh, this guy with this e-bike wants to charge the bike right now. And this, this energy, what he uses it actually, he goes to his private bill at home. So the restaurant or the owner of the restaurant doesn't have to do anything anymore with, yeah, billing for energy. It's still as goes directly on the private bill. But this is only this is only a yeah, few examples. We have lots of other examples how you can extend or how you can uh, uh, yeah, make your own application in this to swap it around. So, but I think, I don't know if you have more time or less time. I want to say actually Yes, we have, you have like two minutes left, so. Ah, two minutes left, yeah. The, 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 this is also good. good. In, the, in the end, I just want to scream my, 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 do, 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 do. now I think, now you see this, and then we can uh, talk a little bit, perfect. No, I think uh, at this kind of platform, at this kind of platform is something unique. So uh, you can make out of one, uh, 
yeah, well, uh, out of one mountain, which stays all the time in the wall. You can make lots of different kinds of application out of it. Of course, uh, all the mountains, they all stay in the wall. They also communicate with each other. So you can also make a nice uh, network out of it. So to communicate your own sensors, your motion detector, or use it for uh, some track, uh, tracking or control your environment, uh, the quality, for example, in different kinds of rooms. But this is also only examples which you can do out of it to extend your own product or to extend your uh, control system with your own uh, heating system or, or something else. Yeah, so I would say um, this was just a short presentation of what the socket is capable of. Um, and I think um, you got an idea through our presentation that there are so many options. And um, when you have any questions about the socket or the platform, um, please get in contact with us. So we are really looking forward to answer your questions. And for now, we say many thanks uh, for taking the time to listen to our presentation. And uh, we hope we can start a collaboration with you together. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I see that Susan has a question in the Q&A box, so please uh, make sure you could, you could answer that uh, in written form. Um, yeah, and, and I think it also uh, needs some more explanation about wiring. Uh, I mean, is it just power or, or it's also internet cables and, and stuff like that that has to be connected uh, to your... So if you could reply in a Q&A uh, question box, that would be nice. We will. Many thanks. Thank you. All right, uh, we shall now continue uh, with our program. And, and the last presentation in this uh, section is uh, going to be uh, given by Wolfram Mallow. Wolfram, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and okay. clear. I'll start the presentation now. All right, that's a beautiful beach we see. <laughs> okay, now you can see the presentation, yes, I think. Yes, Okay. All right. Okay, my name is Wolfram Mello. I am the owner of the uh, engineering office ClipTech. ClipTech is an engineering office uh, which analyzes energy and material resources in order to identify efficiency potentials and measure, measures to achieve climate targets and to remain competitive with cost savings. We consider um, energy potentials with a holistic analysis from the production process to the inclusion of the building and the building infrastructure and many other topics such as generation, transport, supply, storage, conversion, and recovery of energy. We record the energy and material consumption by measuring and collecting the available meter values and uh, data collections to identify efficiency potentials. We provide load profiles. It, can you see the pages, the second? Yeah, yeah we, okay. see, we see slides, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, we provide load profiles, analysis and energy flow analysis and present the profiles and, and, and efficiency investments. We design and simulate PV systems, heat pump systems, CHP and dry generation or ORC systems. And we calculate the profitability and the systems under various conditions also with the option of a maximum of energy autarky. Sublex subsequently, the implementation of the agreed measures is accompanied by ClipTech and monitored with the regard of compliance with the recommend, recommended criteria. We also provide funding consultancies for local subsidies and EU subsidies. Or, uh, our consulting is product and manufacturing independent. Uh, some examples of building analysis in the renovations of residential and non-residential buildings I show here. The range of analysis and optimized buildings is uh, from industrial buildings, office buildings, workshop buildings, hotels, and residential buildings with all contract work sectors. Uh, the, here in this uh, list you see all the uh, the analysis and measures we 
we use in the uh, buildings. The building envelope, thermal insulation, thermal windows, summer thermal protection, heating systems, air conditioning, and ventilation systems, renewable energies, uh, lighting, cold storage room, uh, for instance, in hotels, multimedia application, and building automation. We also did some uh, projects, international projects in, uh, for instance, here in, in China, it's a school building in the uh, Shandong province and uh, the, the residential buildings you can see here. The cal calculation of non-residential buildings is in accordance to the European standard specification DNV 18599. For this purpose, the building is divided into individual usage zones and the consumption values for heating, ventilation, cooling, hot air, water, lighting, or, or uh, these, these are all shown, shown uh, separately. In industrial and commercial buildings in particular, there are many op opportunities to use waste, heat, or energy supply. Calculations based on digital building models and BIM applications are part of the concept uh, development. Automated functions, Functional controls optimize the interaction of uh, efficient technologies and in all contract work sections. The use of well impl implemented uh, building automation increases energy efficiency and safety in the building. Our analysis and recommendations uh, we derive from the coupling of all sectors such as power supply, heat supply, uh, transport and industry and storage. When analyzing buildings and production plants, we see very often inefficient air condition and ventilation systems and re refrigeration systems with obsolete equipment like compressors, pumps, fans, and so on, and change building structures which run for many years and waste a lot of energy. When considering the life cycle costs of ventilation and refrigeration systems, the investment costs amount to 25% compared to the operation, operating costs of 75%. Energy audits of air conditioning and refrigeration systems show us the critical, critical systematic and operational parts of the plant that can be improved. It's in the presentation, you will see some aspects of what we find in the um, systems and analyze. Obsolete equipment, changed building structures, lack of maintenance, heat and cold losses, lack of controls, inefficient drives, air flow drag, operating in complete recir recirculation mode and uh, using conventional energy supply. Um, here you see some, some improving measures uh, to, uh, for the energy efficiency using high efficiency equipment, remodeling uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the air conditioning system to, to change it to, to, to the uh, building usage, maintenance, maintenance uh, like defrosting and um, pipe insulations uh, to uh, control the fans, um, to change the the belt driven fans to axial fans are using modern bionic blades to improve the air passage, free cooling options, and renewable, using renewable energies. For uh, settings and uh, the equipment can be optimized. For instance, for instance, the doors and openings of cold rooms and cold storage cells should be sealed. There are often options uh, for the usage of the free cooling without compressor cooling. In many regions, the outdoor air temperatures are below 21 degrees Celsius for more than 4,000 hours a year and are suitable for free cooling. An important point is also the change in user behavior. For instance, uh, leaving doors open uh, to cold storage rooms. Here I showed Issue your passage. This means the, um, the energy inspection of air cooling system is mandatory within the EU for all operators of air conditioning systems with a cooling capacity of 70 uh, 
kilowatt or more. With the implementation of the regulations in the European countries, uh, plants with lower capacity will already be subjected to control. For instance, in Germany, it's up from 12 kilowatts uh, of cooling power. This is a link to the uh, EU directive uh, where this is uh, uh, yeah, this is the link here, yes. Uh, in the production analysis, we check many components and equipment. For instance, uh, the cross-sectional technologies like electrical drives, measurement and control technology, energy plant, ener energetic plant optimization, pumps, ventilators, compressed air systems, heat recovery, and plant insulation. Also the steam and heat and coal generation, electrical lights, renewable energies, and the energy energetic inspection I mentioned, I mentioned before. We also uh, consider the IT and communication systems and uh, material flow cost accounting. This is an example uh, which we see very often, the compressed air efficiency treatment. This example is not a complete uh, consideration of the uh, compressed air system. It's just a simplified mod model to explain the complexity, complexity of the compressed air system and uh, the treatment. At the outer circle, there are the components of the compressed air. In the inner circles, we can see some of the influence uh, factors. If uh, one point of the influence is changed to optimize the energy efficiency, it's likely that other factors will need to be changed to bring the system back to balance. This is what we do in uh, ClipTech to analyze the companies and the buildings. Um, this is just a small part of our fields or activities. We can, want, uh, if you want to know more, please contact us at the address given at the first page. Thank you very much for the listening. And uh, yes. this is the end of my presentation, yes. All right, all right, Wolfram. Thank you so much. Uh, that's a good overview. I think uh, for all those who want to meet you, they now have a glimpse of what you do. So just a small reminder, we just saw uh, totally seven uh, presentations uh, from uh, Germany's side. So please do apply for B2B meetings. If you haven't uh, done it yet, uh, you can do it at your local uh german baltic chamber of commerce uh, office right um if i had a gift uh, to give away uh, for being the most active uh, participant of this conference that would go to susan thank you so much for being uh, active and asking all the questions and also uh, thanks uh, for the uh, to the others that also uh, do participate actively in this conference uh, uh, please uh, make sure that you check the uh, q a box here in the zoom room uh, to answer Susan's uh, question. All right, uh, we have now heard uh, all, all, the, all the presentations from Germany's side. We also heard uh, the case study from Germany and uh, Lithuania, and now it's uh, Estonia's turn. Our next speaker, speaker is uh, Professor Jarek Kornitski. He's uh, uh, from uh, Tallinn uh, University of Technology, and his topic is nearly zero energy buildings in Estonia. Uh, Professor, are you here? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. All right. Just uh, sharing my screen. Yes, we can see it. Very good. Okay, so um, I will try to be very brief with requirements and give more time for practical examples. So, uh, NCEP in Estonia, it's very simple. So, uh, Energy Performance Certificate Class A is required for new buildings and uh, Class C is required for major renovation. So it's, uh, it's quite, quite a significant difference was in between when we speak new or uh, deep renovation. And it's calculated so that um, non-renewable primary energy is used and um, calculation is from delivered energy. So how much energy delivered to a building when multiplied by primary energy factors and this should be less than the requirement. It is so that on-site 
renewable en energy generated on the building site. This is accounted as much as it used in the building. So this will reduce the amount of a delivered energy and this is in the calculation but when what is exported exported energy is not calculated in these energy performance values and the assessment boundary is the building a site boundary so there is also additional requirement uh, so that epc class b is to be achieved without accounting on-site electricity generation so it means that the building needs to be have uh, also good passive solutions applied and energy efficiency measures cannot be fully compensated with renewable energy generation. So solar PV is not accounting when calculating this uh, requirement, but when it is important to, to understand that solar collectors as a part of a heating system, so they, they are taken still into account. So that's quite a complicated. And here you can see the primary energy factors what I use in Estonia. Uh, when there are a couple of exceptions, if there is not enough space on the roof to install a solar PV, or where these are shaded by, by other buildings or whatever, then in such a case, this EPC class A is not required uh, but EPC class B is enough. So indeed, these two exceptions are formulated in the regulation in detailed fashion, uh, but basically these are important uh, because the requirements are very strict. And if there are not reasonable conditions for the uh, PV panel installation, then it would be very difficult to achieve these requirements. And we don't have any U value or other component based requirements. Indeed, because of very strict primary energy requirements, these buildings are still very highly insulated. Uh, so we have 15 building categories, a lot of values, and actually the values might look quite high because in Estonia, lighting and appliances, so non-EPBD uses are also uh, included to these values. So this makes a comparison very difficult. I take just one example when we speak about apartment building, Estonian value 105. But when you calculate EPBD uses only, so lighting and appliances are not taken into account when the value will be only 46. And uh, Estonian NCEP basically has been evaluated to be the most um, strict in the Nordic climate zone. There is also one paper dealing with this detailed comp comparison among of these uh, Nordic countries. But that's very complicated story how to uh, compare these requirements. In Estonia, it is required that um, energy calculation must be done with a, as a dynamic building simulation and commercial uh, simulation tools can be used for that purpose. So in the regulation, there are some requirements for, for the uh, building simulation tools. And this also applies uh, for the overheating requirements. So if a building does not have a cooling system, uh, then energy requirements include overheating requirements for that purpose. Uh, temperature simulations have to be conducted uh, that's relevant for apartment buildings or for school buildings typically built without cooling systems. So most of our buildings have a cooling systems and when this is uh, not so important. When uh, to calculate EPC, uh, building leakage rate, this value is possible to use if uh, later on building leakage rate will be measured. And then uh, actually EPC needs to be updated. Uh, so first one is just calculated for a building permit application. And when the building is completed, when the final one is updated and calculated for the use permit uh, application. And this will go with measured 
uh, building leakage rate value. And uh, calculated one is valid for two years, and when the next one will be based already, based on the metered energy use. That's the Estonian system. So some examples. Uh, this is one apartment building. Uh, so insulation considered pretty good, actually following our cost optimal recommendations. Uh, when heat recovery ventilation, so that there are single dwelling units, and these have electrical reheating coils and rotary heat exchanges, uh, 80% heat recovery efficiency. So the building is not compact, also the small part is, <clears throat> is heated, so there are quite a lot heat losses in this case. And uh, <clears throat> to understand the calculation, where there is the breakdown of the energy simulation, what, what is the space heating, how much ventilation supply, supply air needs to be heated, uh, when a fixed value for the domestic hot water need, how much should be available from the tap and how it then will be produced. That's when another question and indeed the values will, will change, but uh, the required hot water amount is, is provided as a tabulated value. There is no cooling system, so passive measures applied to avoid overheating and um, uh, fans and pumps when, when a simulated value and for lighting and appliances, uh, tabulated values will be used. Uh, designer cannot affect these values. First, this uh, uh, EPC class B requirement 125 needs to be fulfilled without on-site electricity generation. And in the case of uh, effective district heating or ground source heat pump, that's the case. So if we take this effective district heating, what is a common in Estonia, then we need as a next step to calculate how much PV panels we need to achieve a class A. And this re results to 15 kilowatt hour per square meter PV production so that it is assumed to use a tabulated value that 55% of PV production will be used in the building. So that's, uh, that's a one typical case for apartment building. So uh, insulation is quite good. With very good insulation mater materials like polyurethane, it's possible to have a, a 20 centimeters thickness in external walls and indeed a bit more in external floor and roof, where it is 30 centimeters or more typically. Uh, this is a photo of the first NCEP according to new requirements apartment building in Tallinn, 2017, constructed. And what you can see in this case, there is a centralized heat recovery ventilation because these are rental apartments. And you also can notice that some external shadings to avoid overheating and to make a building without a cooling system. So temperature simulations showed that uh, this provides adequate uh, prevention of, uh, of overheating. So that's the way how these buildings are built today. Uh, typical ventilation systems are in residential buildings, uh, apartment-based ventilation units with heat recovery. In single family and in multifamily, uh, it's the same system applied, but when we will go to the renovation, uh, so the deep renovation when major renovation requirements will apply when it is more typical to install centralized air handling units so that the ductwork can be put on the facade to the insulation layer. That that's, has been the most popular solution. And this was learned by our renovation grant first period when also some other uh, solutions were used with very uh, poor performance and for instance uh, these um, single room ventilation units cannot be used anymore to get the renovation renovation grant because um, major problems and very low air change rates were achieved in, in practice with these units 
So a typical solution, it really is that the ventilation ductwork is put on the facade and there is an insulation layer of 20 centimeters. So uh, this fits very well to the facade. And then it is one uh, air handling unit, uh, what is a very feasible solution and old exhaust air stacks actually quite often are utilized for the exhaust and then only new ductwork is installed to the facade. This is the most popular solution up to five-story buildings. So, and some photos of that solutions, how here it is implemented also in nine-story buildings. So it is also possible, but indeed in this case, ventilation duct size is already bigger and but still with 20 centimeter insulation, it is possible, but in low rise buildings, it's a bit easier and these flat ventilation ducts quite often are used. Another typical solution is to use exhaust air heat pump. So to collect exhaust air in the roof and um, make heat recovery with exhaust air heat pump to the heating system and to the domestic hot water. And in this system, it is required that ventilation radiators with filters and heating up intake air are used. So uh, these really must to be a commercial products providing a good performance to use this system. So ventilation really has turned to be a key issue in successful renovation because a new ventilation system needs to be installed and there is some good guidance what can be uh, recommended to overcome these, these problems. And in these Estonian lessons learned in this process are also very valuable. And finally, I will show uh, one example about uh, non-residential, actually it's a large office building also completed and handed over building very recently according to these new NSAP requirements uh, located in, in Pärnu, this building and achieving uh, 100 uh, what is the requirement of uh, EPC class A. So in this uh, this, this building, uh, chill beams have been used and uh, these active chill beams are actually a very popular solution in office buildings also in more general and indeed uh, mechanical supply and exhaust uh, ventilation with rotary heat exchanger is, is uh, most um, commonly used in these buildings. Uh, very typically uh, and also in this building, uh, district heating has been used and then uh, water radiators for the, for the heating as a very robust and um, also very effective system when active chill beams to provide ventilation and cooling to the rooms. And uh, cooling uh, uh, source is uh, typically outdoor air. So we have a chillers, but combined with a free cooling option, these systems are most, uh, most commonly used in office buildings. And in this building, you really can see that uh, it, it is very well insulated. So external walls, even 0.15, roof 0.1. And also these ventilation system, specific fan power and heat recovery efficiency is uh, very good. And, um, and the same applies for uh, for the cooling system. Indeed, last time of a year, free cooling can be operated when this compressor-based cooling system is, is not needed. And there is also quite extensive PV system to achieve this uh, quite a strict uh, NSAP requirement. So, and I will uh, close my presentation with this slide. Uh, so Estonia has quite an in interesting world record so that five ministries are located in NSEP building uh, completed about five years ago located in Tallinn and this building already has uh, operational energy performance uh, certificate and actually the rating has improved compared to the uh, calculated rating. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. This is an interesting case that you mentioned in, in the very last part of your presentation. Uh, why I'm saying this is that Susan is asking question, what happens if the calculations are better than actual 
uh, real life situation. And uh, so if you could uh, check the question in the Q&A box and uh, answer that in written form, that would be very nice. Uh, right, so uh, we now uh, wrap up uh, the whole day or the half day, I mean, the conference. Uh, Dominic Otto, I saw him already, has, uh, is ready uh, to, to wrap up the conference and to uh, give the closing words. Dominic? Yes, uh, hi, Oscars. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome also from my side, of course. Um, I know we're a little bit over time, so I will definitely make myself very short. I won't take much more time, maybe just uh, two minutes. But I would like definitely from my side to thank all participants here of today's event for the participation, of course, but especially the speakers for their interesting presentations and uh, also yeah, for the important uh, impulses uh, that we have received on this year's topic, which is low energy buildings, in Lithuania and Estonia. Because I remember also last year, um, the conference and, and, and there I was also doing some, some closing remarks and I had to say that, well, everything was very interesting, but to be honest, I didn't really understand everything because it was very also scientific. Now, today, I found it personally very fruitful and I also learned a lot. Um, so it was very, let's say, approachable and understandable, the topics and, and solutions were presented that were very yeah, understandable and also for everyday use, um, which was very great. I also would like to thank the delegation members um, for the presentation of these interesting products, also about their future-oriented work that we were able to learn today. Um, as I said, I found them very interesting. But also, I would like to thank the viewers um, at home in front of their screens, uh, because we had close to even more than 100 participants during today's uh, conference, which is really a great success. And also the, um, the attrition, that so the, um, how many people stayed throughout the, the conference was, was very high. So there are only a very few people left, which is um, usually um, not the case during such, um, let's say, longer online conferences. So I think this is just another proof how important and how topical today's conference um, was also of course in the light of yeah the current energy prices um, i think maybe this current trend also contributed really to the to to the, the to the people and how crucial they consider this topic and it is shown in the uh, sheer number of participants today Last but not least, um, of course, Oscars to do. Also, big thanks for the great moderation of this conference. I think you led us and guided us um, perfectly throughout the, the day. Um, and I'm also sure that some German Baltic partnerships will find their start here today. Uh, and therefore, I hope also for an active uh, exchange um, also after this event today and also during the upcoming two weeks when we have organize the uh, B2 B mate meetings um, and there will be even more. So we're still in the process of organizing those. So I think today was a very good uh, starting point. And last but not least, a very big thank you to the whole AHK team for organizing this event, for organizing the B2B meetings, for setting up this conference or the technical work. So um, everybody involved did a perfect job the conference, I think, today went uh, very smoothly and without any hiccups. Um, I personally, as I said, enjoyed it very much. I found it to be very fruitful and interesting. And yeah, with these closing remarks, maybe one last time back to you, Oscars, uh, for the official closing of the conference. So thank you very much, everybody. Hope to see you soon in the future. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you so much. All right, uh, with this, you might ask uh, what's next. And uh, I think it's time to grasp some uh, fresh air as we today learned that uh, we spend about 90% of our time indoors. So let's go out. Uh, I'm just uh, reminding you about the opportunity to apply for B2B meetings. If you haven't done it uh, yet, you might uh, do it uh, with your local uh, German Baltic uh, Chamber of Commerce. 
you will um, receive an email with the link of the recording of today's conference so you can uh, recap and uh, learn some details that uh, might have slipped uh, today. Uh, from my side, uh, thank you very much. I thank all the technical staff behind the cameras, behind the screens for the smooth uh, conference today. And of course, I thank all the speakers, panelists, uh, and, and also participants uh, for being so active and for being with us today. Thank you so much and see you in some other conference. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.